They used to fool the people and it's tragic It's time to be wise Demystification of their classy set of rules The way the words are used to keep the people The Two Americas, Navigating Sovereignty and Rights Within Dual Legal Systems by Bard Justice This book is for educational purposes only and is not provided as legal advice. Part 1. Foundations of American Sovereignty Chapter 1. The Birth of the Republic 1.1. The Declaration of Independence and its Principles The journey toward American independence began with growing discontent under British rule as colonists faced high taxation, trade restrictions, and a lack of representation. This ultimately led to the Declaration of Independence, drafted by Thomas Jefferson in 1776. The Declaration articulated three essential, unalienable rights, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, grounded in the idea that governments derive their authority from the consent of the governed. By asserting the right to abolish oppressive governance, it laid the foundation for a republic where government existed solely to protect individual freedoms. 1.2 The Constitution, a blueprint for freedom. Following the Revolutionary War, the new United States needed a unifying document. The Constitution, created at the 1787 Constitutional Convention, established a structured government that balanced power among three branches, legislative, executive, and judicial. Unlike England's unwritten constitution, which was based on custom and parliamentary precedent, the U.S. Constitution was a written, codified document intended to limit governmental power and safeguard individual rights against overreach. 1.3 Separation from British Governance the written constitution versus common law tradition. While based on English common law, the U.S. Constitution formalized these principles in a rigid structure to avoid the flexible interpretations prevalent in British governance. Under British law, Parliament held supreme power, which often led to arbitrary rule. By establishing a written constitution, the founders ensured that government actions beyond the prescribed legal authority would be deemed void positioning the Constitution as the supreme law of the land. 1.4. The Ideals of Liberty and Governance The Founders envisioned a society grounded in liberty, where government's role was strictly limited to prevent the authoritarian tendencies experienced under British rule. Liberty meant more than freedom from oppression. It was the assurance that each person's rights to life, liberty, and property would be legally protected. By framing governance in terms of these unalienable rights, they created a government that protected citizens' freedoms without excessive control. 1.5 Federalism and the Division of Powers To guard against centralized tyranny, the founders implemented federalism, dividing powers between the national and state governments. Each state maintained its own government, laws, and courts, ensuring no single authority could become overly powerful. The Tenth Amendment clarified that powers not delegated to the federal government were reserved for the states or the people, underscoring the principle of limited government. 1.6 The Bill of Rights, Safeguarding Individual Liberties The original Constitution did not specify individual protections, leading to demands for a Bill of Rights. Added in 1791, the first ten amendments outlined essential freedoms, such as speech, religion, and due process. These rights were not grants from the government, but recognitions of inherent rights, emphasizing that government's role was to protect these freedoms, not to confer them. Chapter 2. Key Goals of the Founders 2.1 Establishing a Written Constitution for Clear Governance The Founders' primary objective was a transparent government with limited authority, achieved through a written constitution that specified governmental structure and powers. Unlike England's complex, unwritten constitution, the U.S. Constitution aimed for clarity, limiting governmental powers to prevent arbitrary rule and ensuring actions beyond prescribed authority could be challenged. 2.2. The Gold and Silver Standard – Protecting Against Debt Enslavement Experiencing economic instability after the war, the founders advocated for a gold and silver-backed currency to protect against debt exploitation by powerful bankers. Article 1, Section 10 restricted states from issuing anything but gold and silver as legal tender, aiming for economic independence and protecting citizens from debt enslavement by limiting private banking influence. Part 2, The Two United States Chapter 4, The Loophole, Birth of the Federal United States, 
4.1, Article Funds, Section 8, Clause 17 of the Constitution. This clause allowed Congress exclusive legislative power over specific areas, such as the District of Columbia, creating a legal basis for a separate jurisdiction. This led to the formation of the Federal United States, which governs the District of Columbia and other territories under a different framework than the Constitutional Republic. 4.2. The Formation of a Legislative Democracy Within this framework, a legislative democracy was established for territories outside the states. This system granted Congress broader authority within these regions, a jurisdiction distinct from the Constitutional Republic and subject to different laws and governance. Chapter 5. Continental United States versus Federal United States. 5.1. Key Distinctions Between the Entities. The Republic, based on common law, encompasses the 50 sovereign states, whereas the Federal United States governs the District of Columbia and federal territories under legislative authority. This separation created two distinct legal entities within the same nation. 5.2 Jurisdiction and Symbols of Authority The Republic is represented by the traditional American flag, while the federal United States often uses a yellow-fringed version, symbolizing its jurisdiction in federal courts and territories. 5.3 The Role of Congress Across Both Jurisdictions Congress operates in both jurisdictions, with laws applying nationally only when aligned with the Constitution. Within the federal United States, Congress has broader legislative power, affecting territories and certain citizens differently from those within the Republic. Part 3. The Evolution of Legal Systems Chapter 7. Types of Law Under the Original Constitution 7.1. Common Law Protecting Individual Rights and Liberties Under the Original Constitution Common Law derived from precedent and societal customs, allowed individuals freedom of action so long as they respected others' rights to life, liberty, and property. This approach to law focused on protecting individual rights rather than imposing restrictions. 7.2. Equity. Compelling fairness in contracts and obligations. Equity law addressed fairness in contractual matters, compelling individuals to fulfill mutually agreed-upon obligations, and promoting justice without criminal enforcement. 7.3 Admiralty Law, Enforcing Agreements with Potential Sanctions Admiralty Law dealt with maritime and later commercial agreements, often enforcing them with potential penalties, providing stricter controls in specific contractual contexts. Chapter 8, The Blurring of Legal Boundaries, 8.1 The 1938 Merger of Law and Equity In 1938, the merger of common law and equity procedures in federal cases introduced blended legal principles, diminishing the clear protections of common law in favor of administrative rules. 8.2 Financial Control and the Shift from Sovereign to Commercial Law This shift allowed commercial law, particularly in financial matters, to gradually replace common law protections, prioritizing corporate interests and public policy. Part 4 The Rise of Commercial Law Chapter 9 the Present System of Commercial Law 9.1 Erie Railroad v. Tompkins, a watershed moment in 1938. This Supreme Court decision limited federal common law's application, directing courts to apply state law when federal statutes were absent, marking a shift to commercial law dominance. 9.2 Public Policy over Public Law With commercial law, administrative and legislative regulations took precedence over traditional rights protections, focusing on economic and policy priorities. 9.3 Introduction of the Uniform Commercial Code, UCC. The UCC standardized commercial transactions across states, introducing negotiable instruments like Federal Reserve notes and moving away from gold backed currency, allowing for perpetual debt systems. Part 5 Remedies and Rights. Under UCC Chapter 11, Understanding UCC 1207 and 1103. 11.1 UCC 107 Reserving Common Law Rights UCC 1.207 allows individuals to reserve their rights and transactions by marking agreements without prejudice, signaling an intention to retain common law protections against implied commercial obligations. UCC 1103 Ensuring Common Law coexists with the UCC UCC 1103 upholds common law principles unless explicitly overridden by statute allowing courts to interpret UCC rules in line with individual rights. Part 6. Navigating the Dual Legal Systems Chapter 13. Congress and the Two Jurisdictions 13.1. 1. 
How laws differ in application between the Republic and the Federal United States. Laws passed under the Constitution apply to the Republic, while separate federal statutes apply to territories, creating complex distinctions that citizens must understand to determine which laws apply to them. 13.2 Clarifying Ambiguities in Legislative Authority The ambiguity in federal and state law distinctions enables Congress to extend certain statutes beyond their intended jurisdiction, allowing voluntary submission to federal regulations even for citizens of the Republic. Chapter 14 Implications for Modern Citizens 14.1 Recognizing Legislative Statutes versus Constitutional Rights Modern citizens must recognize which laws apply universally and which are specific to federal jurisdictions to protect their rights within the Republic. 14.2 Understanding Voluntary Submission to Federal Statutes Federal statutes often imply voluntary submission through participation in federal programs, emphasizing the importance of reserving rights under UCC 1207 to avoid unintended obligations. Part 7 Reclaiming Sovereignty Chapter 15 the path back to sovereignty. 15.1. Embracing common law rights. Individuals can reclaim sovereignty by understanding and asserting common law rights in everyday transactions, maintaining their freedoms under the original legal framework. 15.2. Applying UCC 1207 in everyday life. Applying UCC 1207 allows individuals to engage in commerce while reserving common law rights, providing a practical means of navigating the commercial system without compromising freedoms. Chapter 16, Reclaiming Rights as Citizens of the Republic. 16.1, Understanding Contracts and Avoiding Unintentional Obligations. Citizens of the Republic can protect themselves by carefully reviewing contracts, reserving rights, and ensuring they do not unknowingly accept commercial jurisdiction over their common law rights. 16.2, Navigating the Modern Legal Landscape. An informed understanding of legal distinctions between the Republic and federal jurisdictions empowers citizens to exercise their rights thoughtfully and maintain autonomy. Conclusion By understanding the dual legal structure of the United States, citizens of the Republic can navigate the commercial legal system while reserving common law rights. Through informed consent, careful use of UCC provisions, and an understanding of the Constitution's intent, Individuals can protect their autonomy and reinforce the principles of self-governance envisioned by the founders. This knowledge allows citizens to engage responsibly in legal and financial transactions while preserving the freedoms rooted in the original republic. Be wise. Demystification of their classy set of rules The way the words are used to keep the people fooled it's got to become a new part of your tools Interpretation skills of the attorney schools Everything you see is overlaid with con Tractions what they're gaining as you pledge to be their pawn Checkmate when the credit's been used up and gone Now here comes repossession on your constitution Word magic They used to fool the people and it's tragic They don't teach this in the schools Word magic they used to fool the people and it's tragic It's time to be wise Now we the people who created the estate Delegated powers limited to federate but Now I see the created entity Has created a person artificially What's this you say? How can this be? How can they create a man artificially? Root of the word is personality Created out of fiction, existing legally Word magic They used to fool the people and it's tragic They don't teach this in the school's word magic They used to fool the people and it's tragic It's time to be wise It's unbelievable, it's unbelievable It's unbelievable One more thing Now what is legal, what is lawful, what is in between? What is their code and what is their key? 
God created law and placed it inside you Your blessings and your birthright and your duties too Word is your bond, your signature, your seal Watch accommodation to the parties who conceal Follow laws of liberty and you won't be condemned For though they have the key, the way is hidden from them Word magic They used to fool the people and it's tragic They don't teach this in the schools, word magic They used to fool the people and it's tragic